Today, I'm showing you a brand new add-on I built for Octane in Blender, a full three-point lighting system with presets, controls, and all the settings you need to light your scene in seconds. Most artists spend way too much time moving lights around, tweaking shadows, and never really knowing if their lighting setup looks professional. But with this add-on, you don't have to waste time building a rig from scratch. You can load up a preset three-point lighting system instantly, start from a clean base, and even save your own favorite lighting setups or reload them later whenever you need them. This is the same type of three-point lighting system used in product studios and commercial shoots. I've just rebuilt it inside of Blender Octane so you can use it in your renders. In this video, I'll light a product scene step-by-step -step with the add-on showing you exactly how each control works, and at the end, I'll tell you how you can download it for completely free. My name is Patrick LeVar. I've been learning Blender Octane for the past five years and teaching everything I know and giving it out for free. And if you're brand new to Blender Octane, I also have a free 101 guide that will get you instantly started today. Links down in description. Down in descriptions. Anyways, enough of the jibba jabba. Let's get into the video. All right, so I've got the scene here fully assembled here. Again, just re really going over how the scene is. It's a very basic scene. I've got a couple of Quixel, uh, Quixel Bridge assets, these rocks here. And what I've actually did was stripped off the material. So there is basically everything except for the actual uh, material here. If I come over here and turn this off and turn this on here so you can quickly just see. I also have, I always start off with all the lights off to shut all the lights off. I'm gonna build from a blank seat. Only thing I got here is this background light, which is going to be like kind of like the backdrop. I got like a, it's just basically a light and I've just moved it enough where I can get this nice little gradient here, which I'm happy because what I'm gonna do is have light. I wanna kind of go for light on this side and then the product will be lit on this side, but it'll be shadows on that side. So kind of getting this contrast of light, dark, light, something that I've used to do back when I used to do mobile filmmaking and cinematography. It was a technique that I've kind of picked up from there. So I'm gonna be mimicking that and again, the scene is very simple here, just that background. And if I come over here, I can quickly, easily dial in. I already have uh, the scene set up right here. So if I'm gonna go to two, which is just gonna be a white background. And then I'm gonna also go to two, which is going to be that same lighting, just so you can get that. So you can basically see here what I'm using. This is basically just the these two rocks minus their material. Jump into the camera view, that's what we're looking. The reason why we got this outline here, you can see, because I'm actually using some texture displacement. So it's like the displacement is pushing and you're not seeing the difference. That's the only reason why that looks like that. So, and boom, now we're just gonna walk through. I'm gonna show you all the, the settings that I have on the three-point lighting edit. I'm actually gonna turn off all that stuff there too. So this is the basic setup we've got. We're gonna get a hit in. Starting from the top here, here is the basic add-on. We've got a whole bunch of presets scenes here that you can use whatever you guys want, or you can save your own and reload your own. So what I'm probably going to do here is I tend to like to just bring in the three point setting and then use the three lights that I kind of just want to do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring in a product three point lighting setup. I'm going to hit apply. And there it is. It brings that in. Some can go with this and be done with it, but I'm not. So what I typically like to do again, here is your quick save. If you, if you make your own custom setup, you can quickly save it in here and load it in. And it'll also you'll be able to open your presets again right here. If you click on open presets, it's going to pop off this little screen here. And this is where it's going to be saved in Blender 4.4 scripts, data, Octane preset lighting. And then you can click there and reload in your lighting setups, right? Same thing if you want to export them out and share them, or you can import ones that are people shared for you. Uh, we also have false coloring. What is false color? Something I use when I used to do mobile filmmaking. This basically allows you to see the light and color values. Yellow is okay. But then if I push this out, now we're going to start getting clipped. Things that are basically red are going to be completely blown out. Okay, so if we turn off the false color, you see everything is blown out. And opposite, if I go to the negative exposure, now things that are completely like really this dark blue are basically not showing up. They're completely black, basically, right? So even here, we still have some light. So that's why you see here, it's not completely blue, right? So this just helps you visualize the color values a little bit more. If you want to try out this lighting add-on yourself, I'm giving it out completely for free. Just hit the link down in the description, drop your email, and you'll get instant access to the download. I just played with the exposure. This is basically bringing the exposure of the overall layer. Uh, what was it, set back to zero. Turn that off. That's basically, this exposure is doing the same thing that you would do if you come in here to Octane right here, your exposure note, that's pretty much the same thing. And it's same for the the uh, false coloring. The false coloring is an option that you have in your settings. 
if you go into your render settings and you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you go into color management right here raw if you go to raw you go to false coloring right there and there is that's pretty much the same thing so i just brought those over because i tend to use those a lot and then scrolling down here we've got lighting control again i can delete that rig right you can add that rig back in or if you make a bunch of changes to it let's say i'll make move lights around the things you can just go ahead and set reset to default it's going to reset that position back to default. Then we have disable environment. And now I'm, my Blender custom setup scene, it doesn't work because I've, I made some custom setups, but basically this will just disable whatever you have in your view, in your world setting and just turn it off just to give you allow to just go straight to a black scene. But that's uh, there if you want that. The next thing you know, we've, I'm gonna break down these here. Now you see I've minimized them all right here on the bottom. We've got key light, fill light and rim light. I can also turn them all on, key light, fill light, rim light. There's our rim light there too. Also, let me go ahead and turn that back light off for the moment here, just so we can just see the impurity. So again, here's my rim light, which is very subtle. And I think it's actually being blocked or something. Uh, here is our film, our fill light. And then here is our key light, okay? Now, if I pop open the key light and scroll it down, you can see we have more settings inside of here. So we've got these other settings here. We can do visibility. This is if the light is in the scene. So uh, you can, you'll can you be able to see it. So let me quickly jump over to and turn this to the viewport so you can see me moving these around here. So you can see our lights are quite far away from our object. Our object is at real world scale, so it's very small. And again, when you're working at real world scale, you can see everything looks still off because the grid is so big. A quick easy fix is that if you come in here, you go to grid size and you can just bring down your grid size to something more smaller like that. I tend to do that a lot. It helps me just visualize things a little bit easier, right? So now that we've got this here, now we need to think in terms of real world. If I'm lighting this little perfume bottle that's about the size of this, right? Would I have a light 10 feet away, right? Or 20 feet away? So in reality, you got to remember this distance is in meters. So this thing is pretty far away, right? So what I would do in real life, I have a light here that's literally less than, it's an arm length away from me. Like I can literally grab my light. It's an arm length away from me, right? So in reality, I would probably light that the same way. I would have a light really close to it. Why have the light way on the other side of the room in the products here? You're going to be blasting light, right? So I, Think you got to think in real world. Like, how would you really like this in the real world? I would have all my distances way closer. So I'm going to take my distance. And I'm just going to bring it down to zero. I'm going to take the height of my light and bring that down to zero. So now it's pretty much right up on it. Okay. Now, if I back off, I'm going to hold down shift and back up my distance. Now also look at this light. It's massive, right? This light is, I can't even imagine what, what the size of it is. It's massive though. So if, um, what the first thing I'm going to do is come in here and change the size here. These are getting a meter. So what, two meters wide or something like that? A two meter light is huge, right? So I'm actually going to bring this down to like maybe 0.5 and maybe even more. Let's go point like eight, kind of something like that. Just like a big, fluffy, big, fat, soft box lighting, right? And also the power, now that we've brought everything close, you can see our power definitely has increased a little bit. Our power has increased a little bit, so we don't need this much power. I'm literally gonna knock this down to a 75 watt, 75 watt bulb, right? Something like that, okay? Here we can also color do our color temperature. I'm a big fan of 5600 daylight color. You can see right here, cool daylight cloudy cutter. Color, color, color. Now, if you do not like using the Calvin scale colors, you want something more RGB, you can click on this right here where it says black body. If you click that, now it's going to turn it to the RGB spectrum. And then you you know, you're not using real world type of things. It's just free like RGB color, right? So now the our our brightness is way off, right? So again, we need to bring this down a little bit. But now you can play and you can choose whatever color you want if you want to do that and use the RGB color full spectrum. Instead, I'm going to go back to my black body. Also, I have the option to do it from an area light to a spotlight. So you can change this to a full on spotlight. And then we've got our cone angle here and then even our hardness on um, what we want. But in this case, I don't want that. You can standardize it or even hit neutralize, uh, normalize. But I don't want to use that in this case. I want to go back to my area light. So here's my area light. We're pretty close. You can see here's the project. It's actually being blocked a little bit by this rock. I'm going to bring the height up. Uh, let me just hold down shift for that fine control, right? I'm gonna hold down shift 
bring it maybe in a little bit more, something like that. Uh, it's a little bit hot. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more, maybe like, let's just go 50, a 55 water, right? Kind of something like that, a little bit moody, nice and soft light. If you want to try out this lighting add-on yourself, I'm giving it out completely for free. Just hit the link down in the description, drop your email, and you'll get instant access to the download. Um, then I can rotate it. I can hold down this right here and this boom, I can rotate it around if you want, something like that. Maybe I want to play with some shadows a little bit. I want to get a little bit of a moody look type. So I'm kind of maybe even use this rock to block some of the light on the product. Again, just playing with lights and shadows. That's all of it. You're like, think about it like you're painting with light. So maybe I just want the light just to hit right here and just kind of like, you know, I don't know, just play. I'm just kind of playing, right? So I kind of like that. Let's give it a little bit more power. Let's go back to 75, maybe something like that. All right, cool. I like that. Then what I'm going to do, since I kind of like where that's at, I'm going to go here and I'm going to condense that. I'm going to turn off the key light. I'm going to go back and play with my rim light, which is going to be back here in the back. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And where is our rim light? Way off in the distance here, way up here. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and zero that out and bring that into the mix. Typically, you want to have that rim light kind of like the opposite side of your key light. So I rotated my key light over here. So I want to put my, my rim light on the opposite side, shooting back at it. So I'm going to go ahead and now kind of let me zoom in a little bit so I can see where we're at here. Oh, here it's huge. Again, it's massive. There, there it is. And now it's in the viewport. Actually, wow. Happy accident. I actually kind of like that backlight right there. Interesting. Again, happy accidents. You could go with that. I would say that it can be a lighting look right there, but we don't want to see this light. So if I hit visibility, now it takes it away, but we still have the light source kind of there. Ooh, I really like that, guys. That's kind of moody. Check it out. And then if I add the other one that we had, the other backlight, look at that. I think I might keep that. I'm going to keep that right now because I like where we're at right now. I like this. Okay, if anything, let's take our rim light and and maybe even bring the power down, maybe like 15. Like it shouldn't really be brighter than, um, let's turn our key light back on. There's our key light, ah, bland default lighting. I like that moody look that we had going. I really liked, I really like this. I like the detail that we're getting here and I like the separation, we're really separating it from the background. Maybe let's try repositioning this key light. Like this is all up to taste and what you're what you're trying to achieve, right? I'm just quickly just playing with the add-on to show you what you can do. I'm going to rotate this back to the other side here, maybe like this opposite side. And then what I'm also going to do is divide this by half size wise. And then I'm going to take the power down to maybe like 45 watts. Now, see, we're with the backlight, I have subsurface on this. We're getting a little bit of subsurface kicking on that right there. I really kind of like where this is going. I'm just going to play for a moment here, guys, okay? If you want to try out this lighting add-on yourself, I'm giving it out completely for free. Just hit the link down in the description, drop your email, and you'll get instant access to the download. All right, so I've kind of just played around a little bit here. Again, like this is all prefer uh, preference and taste. So what I ended up using was just, I didn't even use the key light. Um, I used just the fill light and the rim light. And what I like is, I like this look coming here from the side. Like I may even possibly just render that as one of a, a different look or a different option. But then I also turned in just a little bit of fill light in here to fill in these shadows here. If I go ahead and just to fill in those shadows a little bit, I possibly could even still turn that down. I got it at one right now, which is very low. And then just like, I kind of like this because the background is motivating some lighting from here and I can kind of do that. So just quickly, just showing you the power that you guys have. Like you can play for hours, but it's just really nice to be able just to one drop, one click, have this light set up and have all of this option right here in the one panel that you can use to just play around with it. Like I'm, I, I literally had to remind myself of making a video for you guys to stop because I will just sit here and keep playing. Again, if we can dial this in, I go to my false color so I can see that. We got a little bit of highlights that are blowing out right here in the red zone. So a quick tip here, if you go over to your Octane Imager and if you scroll down to Highlight Compression right here, if I can grab this and just drag this up, you can see I can bring back that range. If I, got, if I take it down, you can see more is being blown out. 
I'm just going to bring that up just a little bit. I like having a little bit of blown outness because it makes it feel a little bit real. I just want to reduce it in this area here, okay? So that definitely is one little uh, trick you can also do. You might even want to play with the uh, clip to white and see if that helps anything. In this case, it's not really doing too much. So that in a nutshell is just basically going over the add-on and what you guys can possibly do with this. And then again, I still have exposure control so I can bring down the exposure if I want or I can bring up the exposure. Just super easy. I'm going to bring down the exposure. And one thing that I tend to like to do is like I want a little bit more contrast in this. So what I typically like to do is jump over to my render settings and then I'll scroll down to all the way down to the bottom and right here, uh, exp uh, exposure and gamma. I kind of like hold down shift and I like to uh, gamma down, gamma down just to bring in some and then expose up, expose up just a little bit. And this is something that I learned watching a Nuke tutorial because in Nuke, a lot of those guys in compositing use gamma and gain uh, to to add contrast. So in this case, I'm just kind of using the exposure in game. Again, it looks like we're blowing that area out a little bit. Let me check. Yep, I did blow that area out a little bit more now. So let me just kind of back off of that a little bit and maybe even cranking up a little bit more on my highlight compression. Yeah, it's coming in a little too hot. I think I exposed up a little bit too much. So let me just bring the exposure down. Oh, too much. I want a little bit of it on. I want a little bit of that blown outness. Like I like a little, it makes it feel just a little bit more natural. Like you have when you're taking pictures. Sometimes you do get some real hot areas in the exposure. Let's do that. I like that. And then let's come back here and take a look at that. Yeah. So I kind of like that. That's really cool. That's that there's, there's my timer to remind me that I'm making a tutorial. If you want to try out this lighting add on yourself, I'm giving it out completely for free. Just hit the link down in the description, drop your email and you'll get instant access to the download. This will also put you on my mailing list where I can share exclusive Blender Octane tips, guides and releases of new tools. Plus, if you're serious about leveling up, you can also hear from me about joining my Blender Octane community. If you want to take your renders even further, the next video I recommend is this one right here, where I show you exactly how to take metal and make it instantly look real grungy and dirty using procedural noises inside of Blender Octane. Click this video here.